A third employee just called in sick on a Friday night. This is the third Sunday in a row that you've worked. You haven't gotten a lunch break in three days straight. The customers are complaining again about you being out of COVID tests. Two of your customers are in an argument because the line is too long. You're tired of arguing with insurance companies for the medication that your customers need. Do you identify with any of this? And do your feet hurt from standing all day? I've always wondered that. Well, I'm going to talk to you guys today about 10 career changes if you're an exhausted pharmacist. Now, a career change doesn't have to be forever. It could be maybe reducing your hours and going part-time and then flirting with another venture, perhaps. Um, There's lots of safe ways to do a career change where you're not just completely jumping ship, but we're going to talk about some options that you may want to research more. The point is to recognize that you get to choose where you spend 40 hours a week And if you're feeling like retail is not what you wanted to choose when you were back in, you know, your 18, 19, 20 uh, year old phase, um, and you're kind of regretting that choice, here's a few ideas other than going into research um, that you could look at. And uh, granted, some of you aren't working in retail. You could be working in a hospital or a prison. There's lots of different places. But in general, um, If you're feeling exhausted and you're kind of looking for something new, let's explore these options. All right, the first idea is to become a consultant. So you can take your years of knowledge and start to mentor others in a a coaching program that perhaps you become a trainer in or starting your own. Another idea is to contract with companies that come in and help pharmacies become more efficient or look at ergonomics or safety. So think about in the past, like what are companies that have come in to work with your pharmacy? Um, What are conferences that you've attended where you've gone and done like continuing education credit? Um, What are workshops that have been presented at conferences that you've attended? These are all things that you could use to do your own research for possible opportunities for yourself um, or companies that you could potentially apply for. Another idea is to look at all of the AI companies that are coming out and helping increase the efficiency of pharmacies. So one of the ideas is to start looking at the company names on all the machines in the pharmacy. So you may not have some of these, but, you know, try to visit a larger pharmacy and start looking or just start doing a Google search. But I'm seeing this, I think it says ABB Tiger Claw. So I would go to the website of ABB and start to read jobs. Um, You can do this with anything, not just AI, but literally use career vision in your pharmacy to start scanning every product and visit those companies' websites to see if you want to work for them. You may find some fascinating jobs that you didn't even know exist simply by visiting the websites of companies that all service a pharmacy. I mean, it could literally be the company that makes the plastic bags that you put the medication in. Who knows? It could be um, the company that makes your your pill splitters. It could be the companies that make... um, the safety uh, lids on the bottles, like you never know. Um, There are so many different opportunities of worlds that touch the world of pharmacy. It doesn't always have to necessarily be um, something that first comes to your mind, but at some point, each and everything in your pharmacy um, had to get some input probably from a pharmacy or pharmacist or buy-in from a pharmacy to have it there. So you never know the opportunities that you might find on companies that are related to everything in your pharmacy. So definitely start visiting websites. It'll give you some great ideas. Next, let's look at animal pharmaceuticals. If you wanna leave people behind completely um, and go work for companies that service animals, whether it's um, online subscriptions or prescription orders, um, whether it is um, partnering with veterinarians, whether it's being at a zoo, um, you can definitely start to look into this, see if you need any additional licensure, and maybe you just want to leave people behind and move on and do something with animals and your pharmaceutical knowledge, which could be really, really interesting. Next. Oh, and also with animals and pharmaceuticals, you can even work on campaigns to stop 
testing of drugs and medications on animals. Um, you'll find some great companies related to that on a website called Idea List. All right, here's another idea. If you love interior design, maybe you hate the aesthetics of the pharmacy that you work in right now and you would love to do it differently, or maybe you've had people come in and rearrange the pharmacy before, like there are people behind that thought process, right? Maybe you would like to be part of pharmacy interior design. Um, so definitely check the links below because I do have a um, list of 100 or more ideas related to pharmacy and you can get into a link to see um, people that are involved in pharmacy interior design if this is an interest for you. Also, if you've started your own pharmacy, this kind of goes back to consulting, you could definitely um, consult with other people who want to get into business and start up their own pharmacy as well. I think in the, the links below, I do have even like a restaurant inside of a pharmacy. And so you could check that out, kind of fun. Um, another idea is to get into education. Your background in science can be converted to teach anything science related, whether it's young children, college, um, high school, whatever you desire, um, could be definitely something that you would like to do. So I remember in high school, our chemistry teacher was a pharmacist. Um, he did not have a credential. He had to start the process and get it while he was teaching us, but he left the field of pharmacy and became a chemistry teacher. So that's definitely something to look into. Um, and also, if you speak other languages, you could be um, a teacher in other countries um, online, in English or in your other languages um, at different universities or schools. So don't just limit yourself to, to English. Lots of opportunities. Um, also in alignment with education is doing tutoring um, for all of the pharmacy exams that people need to take. You could set up a tutoring company, tutoring services, hold mastermind classes, hold study sessions. Um, you could even become a test writer. Um, score, all those different things. Um, you could develop study curriculum, lots of market for all of this. You could do YouTube videos about studying for exams. And I already mentioned being a professor. All right, our next one is looking to be an industry expert. So you could develop a TED talk and give presentations about something and do more research and get research funding to research an idea. Um, you could start a podcast like Ask Your Pharmacist or, or something like that, or be a guest on other podcasts. You could also be an expert witness um, for court cases. So for example, um, overdoses, poisoning, um, uh, irresponsibility of drug companies, um, recalls, those types of things. Um, so you could definitely look into being an expert witness. There are websites where you can um, get on rosters for lawyers to call if you want to be an expert in certain things. Another idea is you can be a technical writer. I don't know if anyone reads these things, but maybe at midnight when they think they're feeling sick and having side effects, they do. I don't know. But someone is writing these. It too can be you if you love writing right? So you can take all your pharmaceutical knowledge and become a technical writer for these types of places. So check the companies of all of the brands of medication that are in your pharmacy, and you might find some of these interesting roles. Another idea is working in waste management. How are pharmaceuticals disposed of, and how do we do that properly and safely? Um, so you can check with all of your local um, waste management programs, um, state waste management programs, federal, and you can also work on lobbying and advocacy related to how things are um, disposed of to keep the environment safe. So for example, I once hosted someone who was a pharmacist from Brazil, and she was practicing English with us for a month because she was applying to get her PhD um, in the United States because she wanted or a second PhD, um, she wanted to study waste management. Um, 
as and look at how pharmaceuticals affected the water stream and eventually affected the fish. Because back in her home community in Brazil, all the fish were having major re reproduction problems because of birth control getting into the water system. And I don't really know a lot about it, but it was fascinating to hear and didn't really realize it was such a problem. But it is. So you could apply all your knowledge in pharmacy to that as well and work with advocacy groups to do research to protect the environment. All right, next you could develop apps. You may use a lot of apps um, in the pharmacy already. So those are companies you could check with to see if they're hiring um, to develop apps for pharmacists to use or um, computer programs, but you can also create apps that students are using to study for pharmacy tests. Um, you can create uh, games that children might want to play um, to learn about how to take their medication every day. Uh, so many different ideas related to that. And then lastly, you can be a traveling pharmacist. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I can't just pick up and be a traveling pharmacist. I have roots here. I have kids. I have a house. I have a dog. Not asking you to do that necessarily, but have you ever considered just making an arrangement with another friend from pharmacy school and sw switching um, to get a change of pace, change of scenery. Um, I'm from a rural area and my neighbor um, is a traveling pharmacist now. And even when she was working as a pharmacist, um, she would go and cover vacations for another pharmacist in a rural area. Um, and he would do the same. And so you get a little change of pace, change of scenery, uh, get to take your family maybe with you. And so that can give you the break that you might need just to get through some long stretches. Um, another option is to really look in rural areas because in rural areas is where they don't have enough staffing. And so um, you may be able to find someone that you know every April you're gonna you're gonna come and cover for them and maybe they'll do the same for you every May. Um, but definitely look into being a traveling pharmacist. And as a traveling pharmacist, you can be a pharmacist on a cruise. You could be a pharmacist um, at a resort. You could be a pharmacist um, in a neighboring town. Like you could be a pharmacist even with the chain that you work with that travels and covers shifts. Um, you never know where you might end up, but it could just be that change of pace that you need. But you can set up the requirements. There's different staffing agencies, like I said, that will... Uh, hear your parameters of what you want, or you can set up your own with pharmacists that you personally know. All right, so I am the fly on the desk. I provide um, input that no one asks for, but hopefully that is helpful. You may agree or disagree. You may find it interesting. You may not. But the goal of this is to expose you to ideas maybe you haven't thought about. If you have ideas you want me to look in further, um, go ahead and email me, and I'll consider it for a future um, YouTube. Now, also be sure to check the link below because I do have over a hundred ideas related to pharmacy with hyperlinks where you can see examples of how people are combining their degree in pharmacy with other interesting um, ideas. So hope you have a great day and get some rest.